Welcome to the Retail Media Moguls podcast brought to you by Platform 195. We share trends and strategies across retail media to help you accelerate your brand growth. I'm your host, Stuart Adamson. Welcome to the Retail Media Moguls podcast. I'm your host, Stuart Adamson. And today we have the privilege of welcoming David Pollett, the Chief Executive Officer of Incremental, a true trailblazer in the retail media measurement space. David brings with him a wealth of experience, having led startups and public companies alike, with a keen focus on driving growth and innovation in the retail media landscape. David's journey is marked by a commitment to pushing the boundaries of traditional measurement strategies and embracing the need for neutrality and consistency in the ever-evolving retail media industry. His leadership at Incremental reflects his dedication to providing brands with tools and insights they need to navigate the complexities of retail media advertising with confidence and clarity. Join us as we delve into David's insights on the current state of retail media measurement, its evolution across channels, and the strategies needed to overcome fragmentation and establish consistent standards for measurement. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you for having me, Stuart, and thank you for uh, maybe the nicest intro I've ever had, so we'll appreciate it. Well, we're very excited because obviously there's the the attribution thing is such a raging conversation uh, and such a raging challenge uh, in terms of in the retail media industry. But before we go into that, why don't you give us a bit of background on you, because you've had quite a, uh, a varied career, really, with various SaaS businesses and, and everything else. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I mean couple of chapters started out, you know, uh, selling advertising, digital advertising in 97. Um, So we often had to actually build the ads if someone agreed to buy an ad on on the sites I was representing, became a marketer. So ran marketing. What were those sites? Was that an ad? Was that an ad network or was that a publisher or? It was called Andover.net. So it was uh, Free Code, Dave Central, Slash.org, Internet Traffic Report. I mean, really kind of heady stuff. It was what uh, Ziff Davis in CNET kind of launched and, in, in, uh, you know, got bigger than us. Although we IPO'd, which was nice. Um, and uh, But, you know, just getting into digital advertising before digital advertising was really a thing, holding hands, singing Kumbaya, talking about the future, um, hopped over into marketing. I ran, uh, the digital marketing operations for lending tree up through IPO, uh, and then hopped over to bank of America, um, and spent four or five years there building their site personalization, their digital media, their search strategy, that sort of stuff. Um, and then really got the bug to go back to startups and went back into the revenue side. And I've hopped through a series of companies, um, had a few exits, had some raging failures, uh, made more than I ever imagined. And a few years later, been considering putting a sign in front of my house because I had blown it all on my next startup. So just a serial entrepreneur in technology to enable marketers to make smarter decisions. And now you're at Incremental. So tell us a bit about what what you're doing there. Yeah. So... um, you know, I think it starts with just, uh, I guess I'll give you the quick one liner on who we are, and then we'll talk a little bit about why we exist. You know, we provide neutral retail media measurement with a focus on distinguishing causality from coincidence. And what I mean by that is, did the ad pre- presented to the customer actually influence their decision to buy, or did it just hit them on the way to the purchase? Um we focused exclusively on retail media because we think that retail media is actually a very different problem. And the present day measurement solutions weren't built to solve for it. And we can discuss that later in the pod if you'd like. Um, we also noticed that it ex- had exploded to about $50 billion in spend. And most of the advertising performance was being re- reported by the recipients of the ad dollars, right? And in the long run, marketers always vote for a neutral measurement solution. Um, You know, you've seen that across all the other mediums from CTV to digital advertising to everything. And I can go through examples of that if you'd like, but we thought we had the tiger by the tail. There was nobody positioned to provide neutral measurement to uh, to advertisers. So we hopped in and did it. And what have you found doing that? Obviously, if you're putting the ad in front of the customer, are they already on the path to purchase or is it effective? So, you know, it's funny, like uh, we were kind of a little nervous when we first started to run some of the 
the reports because there are certain areas that really aren't incremental. And then what we started to understand was retail media. You know, people talk about the fragmentation of retail media as being lots of different RMNs, lots of different retailers. But what they haven't thought about is there's actually fragmentation of media type and placement within the consumer journey. What I mean by that is some retail media is merchandising, full stop. It is not media in the traditional sense. It's not meant to move the heart in, in, in an effort to eventually change the, the, the thinking and drive a purchase. It's there at the point of purchase for a consumer, many of whom have already searched that actual brand to arrive there with intention to buy. And so the, the first thing we've learned is the treatment's very different. Um, and while you may not have incrementality in some of the branded search ads, they're actually incredibly important if you measure them differently. For example, what's the opportunity cost of seeding that position to your competitor, right? Um, and so that's been very, very interesting to us because it's stretched our muscles in terms of traditional media measurement, moving into a space that's so nuanced and, and so different. Um, the other thing we've learned is when you, when you take that merchandising lens for the search, um, you know, you have to get really granular, right? Uh, your position on the page matters. Your pricing matters. Your competitor's position on the page matters. The incrementality of a placement is going to change if your largest competitor starts running a BOGO, right? And so the information that you have to gather to do really good measurement of retail media is significantly different than the typical, give me the high level aggregates spend in impressions of, you know, a broadcast TV campaign run over, leave it to beaver reruns. It's a totally different problem. Um, and so we've, uh, we've had to work our way through all of that. And we believe we've, we've got a really compelling solution for solving the measurement problem. So how are you measuring it? Yeah. I mean, so we use a combination of methodologies. I think the first thing you have to sort of stop and think about is you're not going to get a perfect data set, right? Even before retail media, which I would argue put the walls higher in terms of the walled garden environment, you know, NTA was the sort of the, the approach of choice for measurement of digital media. And it never really worked because you have to have a complete and perfect data set to make MTA work. So what we've done is we've acknowledged that we won't always have all of the data. We won't have PII down to the individual or the household. So on one level, we use econometric modeling, which is something that, you know, really let's call it probabilistic modeling that does a good job of inferring uh, the, the impact of a media investment on an outcome. Uh, it doesn't get quite down to causality though. So what we then do is we synthesize tests in environments where you can't do geographic holdouts or placebo holdouts. And then in the environments where you can, we actually do your straight testing. And that testing is used to uh, select model fit for the, the, um, the econometric model. And also to um, it's introduced into the model and the model then can make sense of that and, and uh, go forth with more confidence that you're getting to causality, not coincidence. Um, a great line from another, another guy in the space was, if you just did econometric modeling, you're making lots of money in the rooster crowed every morning, you'd spend a lot of time making sure that rooster didn't die. Um, that's the risk of just doing like an MMM approach. Um, and, and I think he summarized our methodology well. So, Very good. So talk me through how, who's actually contracting you to do this? Is it the brands or is it the retailers themselves? Is one pushing the other? What's the, where's the sweet spot? We haven't gotten to the retailers yet, although we're getting more interest. So we have partnerships with them. We have integrations with 76 RMNs and retailers so that we can gather the data on behalf of advertisers. Um, and, we, you know, there's a really interesting play there. We haven't done it yet. Uh, we typically get contracted by the brands and or their agencies. We're, we're pretty um, rigid about the fact that we want to have a relationship with your agency before we contract with you. This tool was built for practitioners to take actual action on the insights. It's not a CMO tool for a 
CEO meeting that just says, hey, look, I did a good job. I'm not a cost center. It gets down to the granularity of the campaign and it does it. We can do it daily. No one wants it. So we tend to provide the reports weekly. Um, agencies are often where the rubber hits the road. So contract with the brand, partner closely with the agency. If the agency doesn't have interest in leveraging the tool, we don't, we don't waste our time contracting with the brand because it's not going to see, the value is not going to be seen in market. So, okay. So give me an idea of then of, of, if I took an integrated retail media campaign, right, which can often, let, let's say, so let's say it's on the channel. So it's, it's covering sponsored listings, display, email, potentially, you know, and then, and then into audience extension across social display and everything else. How, what's, what's the sort of, what's working? What's the, what's the thing that, what's the Holy grail? Cause that's what we're all after, isn't it? You mean the Holy grail of like media mix? Yeah. And, and in terms of how it's, how it's working. Got it. Um, so two things. One, we don't actually make recommendations on your search, your social, your display, unless it's enabled with a SKU based model, meaning unless you've introduced what we think of as retail media into the targeting, but we take it all in. Right. And so I can tell you the impact that that has on the outcomes that are occurring across any of the marketplaces or your DTC operations, but we're not going to come back and say, these are changes you should make to your traditional Facebook campaign, right? What we're going to focus in on is um, your Amazon ads, your Walmart ads, your, your Roundel ads for Target, your Curteo ads, right? That's where we're going to start to really help. And now increasingly into CTV activation against retail data. Um, so let's just ground in that. As far as the optimal mix, and this is why there's a really, really good partnership with retailers, the optimal mix is so different based on the, the brand itself. And what I mean by that is there are emergent brands that do search-based advertising that are highly incremental, right? And they get tremendous incrementality out of their conquesting advertising. And they should max it out just like you're a media guy back in the old days. It was max out your Google keywords. Best performing ad lending tree ever had for the years I was there was loans on Yahoo. And that was back when you could buy the keyword, by the way. You didn't bid in, you owned loans for the year. Um, but uh, if you hop to an established brand, you're maintaining those placements so that emergent brands can't come in and take that inventory, right? But you're not going to see a lot of incrementality. And when you do see incrementality, the things that we've seen work, quite frankly, and I'm sharing some of the secret sauce here, but um, it's really interesting when you show something different than they searched within some of the listings. So if they searched for a painkiller and you show a new chewable version or a children's version, you get that on the page also, then you can see incremental cart as a result of it. But if you, if they search on, you know, uh, you know, 36 gel packs of this painkiller, you're probably not going to see a lot of incrementality if you present, you know, packaging with 36 gel packs of that, of, of, of that particular brand. I, I kind of hopped around. Because they're going to buy that anyway. They're going to buy it anyway. That's what they're there for. It's a, I think it's still a viable investment, but it's not the same as running an ad against a bunch of households who are unaware of your product and get exposed to it, right? These are people who are making repeat purchases or they've already decided to purchase your solution. We speak to brands all the time that are that are working with retailers, working with RMNs. What what would you recommend is their best way to measure an attribute? Well, one, we obviously we believe strongly you need a neutral measurement partner, right? Uh, number two, it's not just accepting that you can't compare Instacart and Amazon when their attribution is different and when it has no sense of causality. It's accepting that you also can't use your activation platforms. So if you have an activation platform, I don't want to see any, say any brands because we partner with them, but some of them are trying to do incrementality, right? They're only seeing the retail media that they buy on your behalf. The consumer never goes, hey, I'm engaging with retail media. The consumer knows the ad they saw on TV. They know the digital ads they saw when they were looking at the news. They know the billboards if you buy a billboard. Heck, 
I, I mean, you had a great podcast about four weeks ago where, where uh, when it, one of your guests was talking about circulars going away, but there's still some out there, right? And uh, they, they could experience any of those things on the way to your retail media. You still have to do the traditional media measurement approach of understanding all of the consumer journey, because if you don't, you're going to vastly over attribute the performance of retail media within your measurement approach, right? And so number one is find someone who's neutral. Number two, find somebody who's not a merchandising expert that layered on some level of measurement. Find somebody who's a, a solution provider out there who are true media measurement professionals married together with a team of e-commerce professionals. You need those two expertise to live together in the same in the same kitchen, I guess, house. I don't know. Analogy, Dan. So, and look, we both know that this is, you know, tends to be sort of fairly bottom of the funnel because it's it shows incrementality. Are we seeing, are the brands asking for KPIs beyond that now? Are, are we looking at sort of, are they, are they asking for, you know, awareness and recall and all the, all those sort of more top, top to through the middle, through the line, top of the funnel to through the line? metrics are we are you seeing that happening more and more or is it still quite a rarity no it's not i mean when, when you like you you know we think about modeling ad stock which is really how long does the ads impact last on a consumer right some ads the ad is only worth the time that they're looking at other ads might contribute to the consideration say of buying a car right uh, you might spend more time thinking about uh that purchase we're seeing that people with longer consideration products um are asking for significantly more insight into long-term impact, the impact of brand equity and the improvement of brand equity. Um, we're talking about unaided brand awareness and recall and all of that. And honestly, we haven't sliced all of it perfectly yet. We're a startup, we're two years in. Um, so we are, we're working through that. I can't tell you that I have a perfect answer to all of that. Um, but uh, I, I think we're on a really good path and I haven't seen anyone else on it. Um, the other really important thing is retail media really is becoming portable, right? The retailer data is becoming portable into more impactful ad units. It's moving off site. It's moving into places like CTV. And once you do, there aren't a lot of CTV campaigns ever that worked on a, on a straight DR measurement metric. But if you're able to measure their impact and the outcomes that occur when you pair them with a really good bottom of the funnel ad, they're wonderful campaigns. And as brands make those investments, they're begging for providers who can help them make that connection, understand if they're doing it right, and also justify it, right? So you've got to justify the investment, but you also have to provide insights that are optimizable in, in afford for continuous improvement. Um, and so that's driving, you're, you're spot on. You're, you're, you're practically in our whiteboard sessions right now, right? Like how can we continue to build on getting up the funnel and providing measurement that's truly, truly helpful and accretive to the bottom of the funnel optimizations? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah, it'd be amazing to see as this evolves, you know, the impact of retail media or, or, or media offerings by retailers, it, their impact on top of the funnel metrics. Um, really interested about that. I was just going to say, and you have another force, right? You got the Google DOJ lawsuit. You have the analytics reports coming out on, on made for advertising ads, right? Like this tidal wave of the industry finally acknowledging that a lot of our ads are served in fraudulent ways on fraudulent websites but we're finally going, that emperor is naked and we got to do something about it. So the next step is brands are starting to actually suppress that massive amount of ad investment and inventory that's been going to fraudulent websites. There's going to need to be a reallocation. And you know who I'd love to be? Amazon, Walmart. I'd love to be in such a crisp, clean, protected environment serving ads that advertisers can stand behind with great confidence are reaching real people targeted against real, credible, high-quality data. 
So I think that that there's going to be an explosion in retail media simply as a result of that. Sorry, I did. I took it a little off track, but I'm excited about all that. No, no, I love off track. That's where it gets interesting. But I think I think you're absolutely right. I think you know that whole that whole first party data thing. I mean, Google's loss around sort of cookieless environment and fraud and all that this stuff. Um, you know, it's going to be Amazon's gain in the, in the you know in the bigger picture. Um, but but the wider retail media landscape, but you know, on a slightly smaller level. But you know, it's it's huge for retail. I, I was really interested to talk me through that connected TV piece and how how you, how you're looking to see how you can drive incrementality from a campaign that includes connected TV and on site retail media. Yeah, I mean, so a lot of, you leverage a lot of the econometric bottling for that, right? Um, because the connected fiber isn't there at the individual or the household, even in the safe havens, unless you want to only buy the inventory from a, a select marketplace. But once you go out to CTV and you're targeting people based on their past SKU purchases, you're influencing more than just the decisions they make on the retailer who contributed the data to the campaign, right? And so it's kind of a, it's kind of a difficult problem. The other thing is CTV for all its promises, um, and it is a vast improvement over linear TV from an advertising experience. It's also fragmented on its own, right? The data that comes across from different CTV inventory sources is still, there's no standardization. It comes at different cadences. It comes in different taxonomies. It's actually a very difficult thing to get your arms around. We've got our arms around that. The last part is teasing out which of these were actually targeted to retail media and which of these were just, you know, targeted to the broader CTV audience. And that comes down, unfortunately, to training advertisers on how they can inform the metadata on the campaign by naming the campaigns appropriately when they deploy them. So if they generically push a bunch of campaigns out, there is no data asset that comes back reliably from all CTV and inventory that says this is how this was targeted. And so there's there's th that measurement in part is teaching the advertisers that listen, if you're going to run a CTV campaign, you're not just buying ads, you're buying data, but you have to know how to set the ad up in the beginning, how to how to push it out so that you can claw back the super valuable data. Um, and for us, we're not a services company. We're a SaaS company. The agencies have been incredible partners in that, like bringing them in, telling them what we want to do, giving them the benefits, you know, and a lot of the places in the, in, in this industry agencies, you know, get picked on occasionally here or there. They have wonderful experts. If you can get in the right room, what you find out is these are some of the smartest people walking the earth when it comes to media. And if you, if you sit down and you get working with them, you can solve some really interesting problems. And so I, I, I even want to tell you more, but I can't because I want to let the agencies we're partnering on bring the stuff that, that we're helping them with out to market, right? So one of the things you mentioned earlier was um, fragmentation when you were talking about the CTV piece. Obviously, we've got huge fragmentation with retail media networks. How are you handling all that when it comes to measurement? Well, I mean, the first charge was just trying to get them dialed up, right? So, so uh, when you think about it, very few of them actually have APIs that are available. We love to suck data out of an API. You set it up, you get the data, and, and you're off to the races, right? Um, some have only portals. Some, like Amazon, have APIs, but like try to get your promotional sales out of the Amazon API. You're not going to. And you're going to have a different skew to your promotional sales than you are for the the you know the organic sales that are occurring through the API. So you have this problem of how do you how do you say this cell phone and all these different SKUs are really just this cell phone? So from a data problem across the fragmentation, we have to normalize everything down to a singular product. We have to know Target SKUs, Walmart SKUs. Amazon SKUs, and most of them have multiple SKUs. Um, we get the data through the API. 
We also have scrapers that run out and pull data out of, uh, out of the portals. Um, and then lastly, uh, we have email addresses that, you know, for the, the newest of RMNs, sometimes they're just sending performance reports. So we have technology that opens the performance report email, pulls the data out, normalizes it, and gets it all into one place where you can analyze it, right? Um, so that's one answer to your fragmentation. Um, the other answer is, and I see people like Criteo seem to be pursuing this. I've seen a, a, a few other entrants into this space. I think for the smaller RMNs, there is going to have to be some sort of roll up of audiences across them. You know, at the end of the day, um, advertisers buy what's easy to buy, right? And they buy at scale. And so it's super interesting to have some of these very, very desirable, very targeted RMNs enter the space. And I know it's desirable for them because they're seeing, they're seeing, you know, margins that weren't traditionally a reality within their business. Um, but they're going to have to partner up. There's going to have to be roll-ups. And if they don't do a roll-up just of the inventory, but also of the data asset, um, I, I don't see them surviving the, uh, the keep cancels that occur across the media plans on a regular basis. No, I'd agree with that. There's definitely some consolidation required and opportunity there, you know, scaling audiences. We love a one to many, right? Like if we can integrate with a Criteo and get data across 20 plus RMNs, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You mentioned about the um, SKUs, uh, uh, you know, matching connected TV data with people's the SKUs that people have bought, you know, how many retailers are actually really doing that now? I mean, that is, you know, right at the sort of cutting edge of, of retail media. And, you know, just from experience and talking to various retailers and, and brands, it doesn't feel like that's, it feels like something should be happening, but isn't, isn't there yet. It's maybe, maybe more in Europe versus the US, but no. Took us four years to build it. Um, so, you know, we uh, we had to build it. They don't provide it. There's no normalization of the SKUs, even at Amazon, which I, I would say, you know, I don't know. Walmart's doing some cool stuff. I love the Albertsons crew, so I don't want to say Amazon's the only game in town for innovation and technology, but my point is even they don't have that. So we have a concept of a super SKU, and we use machine learning to go out and determine what SKUs are paired together with what product. Um, it's actually a huge value proposition, but for all the advertisers listening to this, if you have an interest in buying the, just the data output, that's not what we do. You have to buy the measurement. <laughs> yeah, the data outputs the milk, but you got to get the cow. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't want to be just in that business. Um, but it is a big problem. And it's surprising to me that um, it's not easy, even for the retailers internally, when you talk to them and they want to run insights and analytics, they struggle with that challenge within their own systems. Um, so, you know, I think, look, everything came out really fast, right? This grew really fast. And I think it grew for good reason. I think there is, I think the skew based model is, and always has been the best model out there. I don't think the death of the cookie and maids, um, is a bad thing because I sat at the, literally at the intersection of those data assets and advertising spend for a long time. And that data was terrible. Uh, I'll give you an example. We partnered up with a major bank and we just said, the data says this is a male. The data says this is a female. And all the bank wrote back to us was it was right or it was wrong, right? You're going to think I'm lying when I tell you what it came out with because it's like statistically unlikely that it would be this statistically accurate. 50% accuracy on predicting male versus female within the, the digital data asset. Um. And I'll give you one more and then we'll, we'll stop picking on it. But I, I think it's important that people understand why this is so big. Uh, movers, one of the biggest things you could buy in digital media, think about all the things that move triggers. It triggers purchases of cars. It triggers Home Depot versus Lowe's. It triggers new bank accounts. It triggers all sorts of huge decisions. So people always want to target uh, movers. If you went out to the, the pre-cookie implosion, uh, behavioral targeted in, in data assets that you could target your digital advertising for, they would tell you that roughly 40% of the United the households in the United States of America were going to move in the next three months. 
you don't have to run any analytics to know that that's not right. You're like, what do you mean you have 48 million households in a likely to move in the next three month file? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So it's a great thing that we're getting to good data. It's a great thing that there are options to unlock it at scale. It's a terrible thing that we can't combine it all together. There needs to be a safe haven for safe havens that pulls it together. And this media has to get big enough that the advertisers have real command of that. And it's just not there yet. Right now, they are, they are beholden to their retail partners. Yeah. And so do you think there's a place for a sort of standard measurement within the industry? And, you know, and who, who might lead that charge? We're trying. Um, but we're, it would be really, really arrogant at a company of our scale to say it's going to be us. Um, but that's our goal. I do think there needs to be standard measurement. I don't think it should be retail media only. I think there needs to be retail media measurement expertise nested within a broader measurement solution, right? Because if you ever tried to measure local TV, right, and, and unravel cable zones in the U.S., every one of these things is a difficult challenge. But advertisers deserve one solution that measures them all. Um, and I don't quite know how we're going to get there. I just think that it is logical that consumers don't distinguish between channels and mediums and media type. Why would we measure with those distinctions? So, I mean, given we've only got a few minutes left, I mean, tell us what, what does that future look like? Where, where do you see this in three, three years time, three to five years time in terms of how this, what will retailers be measuring what will brands be? What will, what will brands be measuring? What will be? What will retailers be agreeing to? Where's all this going, David? First, let me say that you're talking to the guy who, when Google IPO, didn't buy it. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I, uh, I, um, I, I'm always scared of my three to five year uh, uh, sort of guesses. But where I think where I think it goes is I think that there'll be some very large advertisers, the likes of you know Mark Pritchard at P and G, who I don't know, I'm not trying to drop a name, but he's I think we can all accept wildly influential, right? Some of them will come along, and they will pull the retailers along into some framework of making the performance data more portable to all of the other media types. And once that finger is out of the dam, typically it tends to go down. Next thing you know, progressives got it, you know, so the big spenders have it and then it goes down and it works its way. Um, but I, I, I don't think there's a technical and I don't think there's a privacy issue here. I think what there is, is there is a media type right now where the buyer is not necessarily in more control than the seller. And until that paradigm shifts, we're not really going to be able to pull along the innovation at the rate that we, we would like when it comes to cross RMN measurement, much less cross channel measurement. Um, my near term uh, uh, prediction, which is like really dumb because everyone's reading about it right now, but I do think that the introduction of retail media data into CTV is the biggest thing that will occur in the next two years for retail media marketers. And I think it'll be wildly impactful. Um, and that will influence who you use for your retail media because you, you, you will want somebody who either has good partnership with other agencies or who can do both together, right? I think you'll see a shift in, in, in the budget controls. Did that answer your question? That does very, very well. I think, you know, that, well, we were talking about it on a recent podcast, actually, I was saying, I think, you know, connected TV has a huge opportunity with retail media. It's going to be absolutely massive. Um, you know, thousands of micro campaigns as opposed to sort of huge TV budget campaigns, which, but, and the TV industry needs it, you know, I feel sorry for it. You know, ultimately there's a huge shift going on in there. Uh, certainly, you know, linear TV is really taking a hammering. Um, but TV is not dead and TV is going to grow again very significantly if it gets this retail media play right and it partners with the the retailers in the right way um and if they can whack the measurement on there to show that it's actually working and it's bringing 
you know, a positive brand effect, not necessarily just an incremental sales effect, but a positive brand effect, then the sky's the limit, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, and think about when you connect improving your brand equity to the bottom of the funnel conversions. I mean, retail media presents an at-scale mechanism for actually making those connections. Nobody's done it well yet, right? Like, that's really cool. It's a whole different way to value media. So this this pairing, I mean, this is chocolate and peanut butter. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. And the double screening, measuring that, you know, where somebody's watching connected TV, but then also on their, on their phone and able to actually buy, purchase. Yeah, that's a, probably on your whiteboard, that one. Now you're getting back to PII resolution, which I don't do. I don't do. We'll have to partner for someone with that. <laughs> you know? have to put it on your whiteboard. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to ask you one final question just because it's a hot topic and then people are interested in it with AI. You know, how is AI um, affecting the analytics and the, how, how is it probably affecting how people are running campaigns at the moment? Is it, are we starting to see it in there? And then also, how might it affect, you know, how measure the measurement of campaigns? Tell me what's going on with that in the state. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's almost two answers. One, we are seeing an impact on people's ability to create content and even images, right? Um, using AI, uh, there are a lot of companies out there making a lot of noise about their use of an LLM for something that just what we would consider traditional old machine learning was wonderfully effective for, right? And so there's a lot of either over-representation or over-utilization of a capability that wasn't really built to solve that problem. So I think that there'll be a maturing where people will start to understand there is no magic elixir to everything, right? Um, all, you know, as far as AI goes, there are set places where AI um, is incredibly useful now, and that will continue to expand, not just as the capability expands and the data assets feeding into it, but quite frankly, as the expertise expands on the brands. Most brands don't have a lot of AI experts on hand yet. And if you're hiring, you know, Palantir or McKinsey, that's great. They're going to tell you a lot of wonderful things that you don't have the soldiers to deploy, right? And so I think there's going to be there's, I think this is going to take longer, and I know I'm disagreeing with a bunch of, you know, renowned geniuses in this world, but they don't have the benefit of having been middle management at large Fortune 500 companies before. <laughs> what I know is it takes six months to get the coffee maker fixed, right? Um, so, brilliant, brilliant. Look, thank you so much, David, for gracing our retail media moguls podcast with those insights. I'm really excited to see how this whole attribution piece develops. It's, it's brilliant. I think what you're doing, keep going. Um, you know, I, I'm excited to see it, it proven, to be honest, it, it's effect, not just at the bottom of the funnel, but at the top. Um, and then all those sort of, all that use of that first party data that now exists and purchase intent data, purchase, previous purchase data. I think how seeing how marketers can now leverage that, you know, in partnership with their retail partners is, it's so exciting and, and attribution and, and measurement sits right at the heart. Um, so good luck with that. And let, let, let's please redo this again in a year and see, see where it's at because it's such an important area. Uh, we'd love to have you back. Thank you for having me. Uh, I actually am an avid listener. So I was really excited uh, when, I heard I, when I heard I had a chance to meet you. I really appreciate it and uh, would love to do it again sometime. Thanks. Great. Thanks, David. Take care. The Retail Media Moguls podcast is brought to you by Platform 195. To learn more about Platform 195 and how to connect retail media with intelligent marketing to accelerate growth, visit platform195.com. And then make sure to search for Retail Media Moguls in Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Google Podcasts or anywhere else podcasts are found. Make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And on behalf of the team here at Platform 195, Thanks for listening.